One of my childhood memories was going with mom and dad to see the leper colony in Carville, Louisiana. You know, it only closed in 2005. We didn't actually, of course, tour the, the colony, but my parents pointed out to me and they tried to explain to me that this is where people with leprosy or Hansen's disease lived. I don't know if you knew, but this was the only leprosarium colony in the whole United States and it was here in our area of Louisiana. Even though we had that leprosy colony in Louisiana, most of us don't think about leprosy from day to day, right? It's not one of the things that, that is in our consciousness. But in Jesus' day, this really pervaded society. To have a leprosy diagnosis was, was like getting the worst news that you ever could imagine. You would see that little spot on your skin, and in many ways, the thought that would come over people is, my life is over. We heard in the first reading from Leviticus what they would have to endure because they had leprosy. They would have to keep their hair and their beard a certain way, their clothing in a certain way, but most importantly, they were cut off from their community. They had to leave their towns, leave their homes, and they couldn't go in the temple. They couldn't worship. They couldn't express their faith in their relationship with God. And so it's trying to wrap our mind around this to see the desperate situation that this leper who approaches Jesus in Mark's gospel, the desperation that he has for healing. In the passage, and we hear about this both in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the leper comes to Jesus, seeks him out. In Mark's version, it says that he kneels down and begs the Lord that he would be made clean, that he would be healed. And Jesus does it. Jesus responds to this, this request for healing, and he says, I do will it be made clean. And he says to go and show yourself to the priest, fulfill the, the law, and you can come back into the community. And he tells them the, the messianic secret, don't tell anyone what, what's happened, but of course the, the, the healed leper goes and he shares the good news with everyone. Let me tell you about what Jesus did. I had leprosy. I was cut off from my family. I was, was, was sent away from my home. I couldn't worship in the temple. And now I've been made clean. And the one who did it was Jesus of Nazareth. He had the power to make me clean. He had the power to bring life into me again. Now, even though we, you know, maybe can't wrap our minds around leprosy, we can think of certain situations in our lives that sometimes cut us off, that sometimes banish us from our community, and most importantly, from our relationship with God. The leper seeks Jesus out. Bartimaeus seeks Jesus out. Zacchaeus seeks Jesus out. The, 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 the woman in Bethany who anoints the feet of Jesus seeks Jesus out. And Jesus, when he is sought out, and he, that request, that comes for healing, Jesus, throughout the scriptures, says, I do will it. Be made clean, be healed. Your faith has saved you, right? Jesus moves in our life. Now, as we hear all this, the question is always, Lord, what do I need to come to you with? How do I need to approach you with faith and with the desire for your healing seeking that you would will wholeness in my life. Of course, many of the scripture scholars will, will look at leprosy in particular and show that it is an analogy for sin. Sin, brothers and sisters, cuts us off from the body of Christ. Grave sin ruptures our relationship with God, turns us in ourself, and when we are aware that we are in that debilitating life of sin. The only place that we can go, the only person that we can turn to, to bring us back to life again, is Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth, the Word who has been made flesh, right? Jesus gives us His sacramental life. He gives us His Word. He gives us the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And when we come to him in faith, he says, be made clean. Your sins are forgiven. You have life again. Sometimes it's a mystery why Jesus allows, God allows certain things like this to happen. Sometimes it's a mystery why he doesn't heal everyone. We hear about certain circumstances within the scriptures that he heals certain cases of leprosy. He raises from the dead certain people. He gives sight to certain blind people, but he doesn't do it to everyone. And sometimes we may have a physical ailment. We may have a mental ailment. And we come to the Lord and and we ask for healing, but maybe for whatever reason, we are still in that infirmity. We're still in that sickness. And we may ask ourselves the question, Lord, why do you allow this? Pope doesn't know. Bishop doesn't know. I don't know the answer to those questions. But what I do know is that to place our trust in Jesus, to trust that whatever life circumstances, whatever the answer to our prayers may be, that God is in control and that the Lord will use whatever our circumstances, whether it be physical ailment or mental ailment, or even sometimes when we fall into temptation and fall into sin, God can use those as an opportunity to manifest his presence. One, receiving his healing. And two, in the midst of carrying our cross, to recognize Jesus in the midst of us, carrying our cross with us, bringing life to us. So my brothers and sisters today, what do we need to bring to Jesus? How do we need to seek the Lord for healing? How do we need to place our trust in him? He is the great physician. He is the divine healer. He will answer our prayers and our requests in the way that he sees that we need in accordance with his holy will. Trust in him, come to him, and I promise you, whether in physical healing or in spiritual healing or in emotional or mental healing, God will manifest his presence and he will give us all that we need. Amen.